So inside these beakers, what we have is a thin piece of what feels like plastic. And it looks very flat, so you'll see that there's really not much to it. It's just a long piece of plastic, it seems. But it's actually tubing. And it's special in that there are small holes in this that will allow certain sized molecules to pass through fairly easily, and other ones will not pass through. Now, before you ever use these, and I'm not doing this properly because I'm not wearing gloves, but it's okay for the purposes of this, we just need to be able to um, really quickly set this up. So before you do this, you would always want to wash this before you actually start using it. So uh, in the process, you're actually gonna be able to open up the bag. So the easiest way to do this is to turn on a little bit of tap water, a, a slow stream, and just rub this piece of plastic between your fingers. Okay, so just put it under the water and rub it between your fingers and what's going to happen is that it's going to open up. Now, you would always actually start by soaking this in some water or buffer. Uh, some people will actually boil this before using it, okay, just to ensure that it's not contaminated. So now what you can see is that this tubing is actually opening up. Okay? So the next thing you wanted to do is to wash it out on the inside and the outside. So the outside is relatively clean at this point, but you want to wash it out on the inside as well to remove any kind of particles that might have been there from the factory process. And so what you want to do is plug the bottom between your fingers to make sure there's no water flowing through, and then open it up under the water and allow water to flow in. So what you can see here is it's filling up. So we have a little sausage here. So I'm going to just allow the water to drain through and do that a few times to allow the water to just kind of rinse out the inside of this tubing as well as the outside. So again, one more time. And sometimes you need to play around with it until it opens. Okay, so that's fine. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tie off one end. So I'm going to put a knot on this. And so we have a knot. Now I'm going to tighten this fairly gently because I don't want to stretch those pores. I don't want to damage this tubing. I'm introducing holes in this that would allow our samples to leak through. So just gently tug on it and just kind of tighten the knot as much as you can without pulling too strongly, okay? Now this should prevent things from flowing through the tubing, but we don't trust everything that easily, so as scientists we're going to just make double sure, so we do a second knot, and just tie a second knot above or below, wherever you feel like, just don't put it in the middle, okay? So again, just gently tighten it up. So basically what we're doing is introducing two knots in this so that even if one of them isn't going to be super tight, between the two of them, they should keep everything inside, okay? And again, as scientists, we don't trust everything that we do, so we're going to test things. And so we're going to fill this with some water. And let's see if this works, okay? <clears throat> And so I'm going to get a little bit of this. It's already too much water. Okay. So I'm going to wipe the outside. I'm plugging the top so that nothing comes out of the top. And I'm just kind of wiping the outside just to remove any excess water that might be on the surface. Okay. Then I'm going to pinch the top very tightly between my fingers. And I'm going to test to see if it leaks. So I'm going to just gently squeeze. You're not trying to crush this thing. Just squeeze gently, apply a bit of pressure. And if you see any water leaking out the bottom, then that's probably because your knot aren't, knots aren't tight enough, okay? So right now I'm not seeing any leakage, so I can trust my knots, okay? So now that I've done this, I can pour this out, and I have the analysis to be that is ready to go, okay? So now I'm going to go ahead and add our sample to this. And so our sample today is going to be a mixture of starch and glucose, okay? So let's just set this down for a moment. Okay. 
So I'm gonna take a couple of pipette folds of each. Again, you don't really have to measure these things out. We're not trying to accurately put a certain volume in here. Just a little bit to have some sample inside of this tubing. Sometimes to do a dropper in there. Oops. Wrong case. And now this is going to be my glucose. Maybe I'm just going to put three pipe fed folds in there. Now we have our sample inside. I'm just gonna mix it up a little bit. Now, <clears throat> I'm not ready to put this into our beaker yet because I might have some residue around the outside. So the next thing you wanna do is go back to the sink and just rinse off the outside of this thing to make sure that there is no sample on the outside of the bag so that if there is anything that goes into this beaker afterwards, if there's any glucose or any starch that goes into this beaker, it's because it went through the dialysis bag and it wasn't just on the outside of the bag. So I'm just gonna wash this and come right back. I guess you can watch me as I do this. So I just turn on the water. And again, I'm just pinching at the top so that no water gets in. And just really quickly rinse off the outside. Okay, and I'm going to put this inside of our beaker. Now some labs they have fancy clamps they can put on to close these things. We don't have any of those, so we're just going to fold it over to the side. And we're going to add some water to this. That we know it's pure water, so it doesn't have any starch or glucose in it. And we're going to add some iodine to this. Now the reason we're adding iodine is because we want to be able to test for the presence of starch. So put in a decent amount of iodine, don't just put in two or three drops. Make sure that the water looks nice and yellow. Once you have it looking like this, you can set it aside for about 10-15 minutes and we'll see the results afterwards. Let's talk about our results from the dialysis tubing experiment. Okay, So what we see here is that the beaker itself has not changed color. Okay, So that means that starch has not left the dialysis bag. What we also see is that the dialysis bag itself has actually turned blue, okay, which means that iodine has entered the bag. That tells you two things. Starch is too large to come out of the bag, so the pores are too small. It also tells you that iodine is small enough to pass across. So obviously there are pores within this bag that allow for passage of molecules. So again, this is a semi-permeable membrane. Some things are able to pass across, other things are not able to pass across, okay? So for that part of the experiment, we already know the answer that starch is not able to pass across. The question now is, can we, are we able to detect glucose, okay? And so as you might remember, the way to test for glucose is to do a Benedict's test, okay? And so what we're going to do is we're going to set up three test tubes, okay, so three test tubes, okay? One of them will get the contents of the beaker. One of them will get the contents of the tubing, so the bag. And one of them will get water. Okay. To each one of these, we will add some Benedict reagent. Oops, reagent. Okay. So each of these will get the same amount of Benedict's reagent. Okay, so we're setting up an experiment that has some controls and some experimental tubes. Now, we don't know what's in the beaker. We want to find that out. So that's our experimental tube. We know what we put into the bag. And we know what's in water. We know that water does not have glucose. So this is going to be our negative control. Okay. Now we know what's in the bag. I know that I put glucose in there. Okay. 
when that glucose, if that glucose leaves the bag, it's not going to leave completely. There's always going to be some glucose left over in there. Okay, so I know that there should be glucose inside the bag. So this is going to be acting as my positive control. Okay, so we have a negative control. We have positive control. Okay, so negative control is going to show us what it looks like when there is no glucose. The positive control will show us what it looks like when there is glucose in the sample. And the experimental tube will be the one that has the contents of the beaker. Okay, and that's where we find out, does it have glucose or not? Was glucose able to pass across this membrane or not? Okay, so let's set this up. We need three test tubes. Okay. And I'm going to put in, let's label these just so we have. Okay, let's go tube one. That will be our experimental. Tube two will be my positive control. And tube three will be my negative control. Okay? So my negative control gets, let's say, two pipettefuls of water. My positive control is going to get the inside of the bag. So we're going to open this up. This is going to be a little tricky. Scissors. Ah, okay. So I'm just going to wet this bag. When these things dry, they become very difficult to work with. So that's one of the problems. All right, so here we go. We have our tube being released again. Take falls from inside the bag. Again, I know I put glucose in there, so that's going to be my positive control. Right. And my experimental will be the inside of the beaker, so I'm going to have two pipette falls from the beaker. Okay, now Benedict's reagent. So let's just do a pipette full of this into each of these. And the amount of Benedict's reagent is our controlled variable, so we want to make sure that all of them get the same amount. There we go. So now we have three test tubes that look pretty much the same. But again, we have to cook these before we can get our results. So let's put them into the water bath for a few minutes, and we'll see our final results. Our results from our experiment. So let's take a look at the negative control first. So negative control shows us what it looks like when we don't have any glucose. We don't have any reducing sugars in this solution, and so we have a nice blue solution here. Okay. Now our positive control, again, this is from inside the dialysis bag. Okay, we know we put glucose in there, and clearly there is glucose there. Okay, so you can clearly see there's a big difference between these two tubes. Okay, so we obviously have a lot of precipitate here that's nice and red. And when we look at our experimental tube, it is, so it is very different from the negative control. Obviously, this tube is very different from negative control, so it does have some reducing sugars in there. Obviously, glucose, that's the only one that we put in there. Um, now, the difference between these two is just simply due to the concentration okay uh, the amount of time that we had incubated this solution for didn't really allow for complete exchange of glucose across the membrane and so the concentration of glucose across the membrane did not equalize and so the concentration inside the bag is still higher which is why this is more orange than on the outside of the bag which is why this is a much more lighter color to it okay so the difference that you're seeing here is just simply because of the differences in the concentrations, but both of them do contain glucose.